Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program and Happy New Year. It's the start of 2016. We are excited about all the possibilities for this year and we're going to talk about building your network in the new year. We've got lots of good ideas and a great guest today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Are you achieving everything you want in life? What if there was a time-tested way for you to get everything you've dreamed of? The most successful people in life set goals and keep themselves accountable. But how? The good news is that it's not rocket science. You too can learn the skills and unleash the motivation that will create success in your life. And now is the time. Hi, this is Robert Helms and I'd like to personally invite you to attend Creating Your Future, the 2016 Goals Retreat, taking place January 8th through 10th in beautiful San Diego, California. This unique weekend has been called phenomenal, inspirational, and life-changing by the hundreds of people that have attended. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com and click events or call 888-489-7723, extension 18. Get your life back on track physically, spiritually, and financially. Attend the 2016 Goals Retreat on the second weekend of the new year. Click events at realestateguysradio.com and register why there's still early bird pricing. This is no dress rehearsal. Live the life you were meant to. Visit realestateguysradio.com or call 888-489-7723 today. Hi, this is Patrick from Paradigm Life. I've recently written an ebook called The Perpetual Wealth Strategy. The ebook discusses one of the best investments, real estate, combined with a financial vehicle used by the wealthy, many U.S. presidents, famous actors, athletes, and even Houdini himself. You can download the ebook for free in the resources section on the Real Estate Guys Radio homepage. Don't wait, go download it now. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I guess that means we're now in our 20th year of broadcasting. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Let's say Happy New Year to our co-host, financial strategist, Russell Gray. Happy New Year, Robert. Can, can you believe it's been this many years? It's crazy. It's crazy. I don't feel any older. <laughs> I, I don't feel older, and then somebody sends me a picture of myself. You know, we finally updated the picture on the website, and it's like, wow. <laughs> You know, I liked having our younger brothers <laughs> it on the was website. Great, yeah. That was nice. No, it's it's uh, time marches on, but you know what? This is the greatest time of year, just coming through the holidays, which is always wonderful, and now a brand new blank slate, a clean canvas, a new year is here. Yeah, it's like football. It's a new season. It's an opportunity to set lofty goals. It's an opportunity to get all the lessons from last season and figure out, you know, what you want to change and what you want to do well and, and recommit yourself and, and reinvigorate yourself. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. It's, it, it is definitely my favorite time of year. You know, one of the distinctions of success, what is it that makes a particular person, a particular business owner, a particular real estate investor more successful than another? One of the distinctions is the people they hang out with, the crowd that you associate yourself with. The environment and association has so much impact on who you are and how successful you become in any business, in any sports, in any peer group. Well, I mean, think about it. I mean, just imagine if you showed up in this earth, right, and they locked you in a closet and you never interacted with anybody. How quickly would you pick up the language? How right. quickly would you pick up the social mores? How quickly would you learn how to do basic functions of survival? Yeah. You wouldn't learn anything. Why should it be any different when someone decides, hey, I want to change my life. I want to go from being a working class drone sitting in a cubicle somewhere doing something I hate living for Fridays and retirement to I want to become the master of my own destiny. I want to go out and build a portfolio. I want to have streams of passive income coming in that are going to allow me to live how I want to live and do what I want to do with my time. If you decide you want to go down that path, there are people who've done it, who are doing it, that are accessing resources and thought patterns and habits and attitudes, all of which you need to begin to pick up. It's part of a culture, just like you learn a culture when you're in any type of society. And without that cultural interaction, without that involvement with the right people, you're not going to pick it up, right? I mean, if I wanted to learn how to speak Spanish, and then I got stuck living in Taiwan somewhere and I'm hanging out with a bunch of Chinese people. How well am I going to learn to speak Spanish? Not too well. I'm not going to, I'm going to learn to speak 
Taiwanese, I'm going to right. I'm going to learn how to use chopsticks. I'm going to learn to think about all kinds of things a certain way that is in that culture. If I want to be a real estate investor, if I want to be the kind of guy or gal who knows how to create streams of passive income through the vehicle of real estate, there are attitudes, habits, beliefs, knowledge, and professional people that I need to understand, be connected with, that have to become part of who I am. And the only way that's going to happen is if I immerse myself in that culture. And the quicker you do it and the more of it you do, the faster you're going to get there. So that's what we're going to talk about today. How do you build your real estate network? How do you go from wherever you are right now in your real estate portfolio building and expand that? Could you 2X in 2016? Could you 10X? Is this a year for expansion for you? And it starts with expanding your mind, getting more information. But it can't just be information. Information stuck in your brain doesn't do any good. For all these years, our motto has been education for effective action. You get educated so you can take action. So a great way to get educated is to do so being around people that are doing the thing, getting it done. We had a great show last week with a lot of folks that are out there doing it. We've got another great year of wonderful guests, people who are going to share their best ideas, best practices with you. But we're going to talk today on the show about what are some of the ways, some of the practical ways that you can get around the right folks that can help you get to that next level in your real estate investing. It doesn't matter if you've never invested before. We get a lot of people that listen to our show who are dreaming of being real estate investors. That, you know what, is awesome. It starts with the dream, with this idea that I can have more, like you were talking about, Russ. What can can I do with my life? As far as I can tell, this is a one-shot deal, right? I mean, you have all your beliefs about what happens when you're gone, but this time around, here we are. We've got this amazing opportunity, and you're not getting any younger, and yet you have this brand new wonderful year to work with. So there's a lot you can do, and the great news is we're going to share a ton of ideas with you today that you can put into action. So so why were you pointing at me when you were saying that you're not getting any younger? Were you, I, I, mean, I don't know. What, I what are you saying? Saying? I, well, three fingers were pointing back at me, so I guess it's, it's all the same. But here's what's great. Time is not necessarily a zero-sum game because you can collapse time frames. One of our favorite things to do as the real estate guys is to be able to shave time off of whatever it takes to get something done. In our syndication mentoring club, we've got a group of dedicated folks who are taking what took us 10 or 12 or 15 years to do and doing it in a couple years. So stick with me on this because the vast majority of people listening to this are information junkies. I know I was an information junkie and in many ways I still am an information junkie. Yes. You you, you said something at the top that I, I want to make sure that we cover because we are, get ready, we're about to hit you over the head with a sledgehammer, you information junkies out there, because you think it's about the information, and it isn't. It isn't about the information. And you need to have information, so don't get me wrong. But see, the vast majority of people who read books never meet the author. The vast majority of people who listen to the podcast never come and meet the host or never come to a live event. There are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people that listen to this podcast and only a few hundred that are actually ever come out to a live event. People say, well, gosh, why don't you guys have more webinars and why don't you have more books? I mean, even the one book we wrote is kind of out of print, right? We're still, it's on our to-do list. It's because it's not about that, right? Right. It really isn't about that. If you were to come over and look at my bookshelf in my library, I have a whole shelf dedicated to books that are signed by the authors. We go out of our way, traveling all over the place to meet people because it isn't the ideas alone. That's the starting point. I read somebody's book so that when I meet them, not if, when I meet them, we can have a conversation about what they wrote about. You know, and I watch you do this and I've done the same thing. It's such a great advantage when you can talk intelligently with an author about something they wrote. And more often than not, they are humbled that you act like, gosh, you actually read my book. Again, the purpose of this interaction is to connect. And when you know something about the person, when you have done your homework, right? When I used to sell corporate sales, right? I'd go business to business. I would spend a lot of time studying the company. I would read their annual report if they were public. I would read when we finally got websites back in the day. There, That was kind of new, you know, <laughs> by the time I was leaving that. But Anything I could get my hands on that told me, if I, I would read the local business journal and I would look and see when their CEO had been quoted. I would look for their press releases. I would do anything I could to learn something about them. So when I spoke to them, I was able to connect. It was about building a relationship. 
And so many people think it's about the information and it isn't. You use the information so that you have things to talk about with other people people. Such a good point. You know, people often ask us, how is it that we're as connected as we are with so many amazing people? Well, you just gave one of our secrets away. That's exactly what we do. We are interested in them. When you become interested in somebody, then generally you're now interesting to them. That's the way it works. And so how do you foster a relationship? It's got to be based on something, not just the weather, not just we happen to be in the same place at the same time, not just, oh, you're hot looking, right? There has to be something there. And so when someone, when you read an author's work and it speaks to you, like take the example of how many people do we meet who say that Rich Dad, Poor Dad changed their life. Tons right, of people, right. tons, Ton, tons of people, the hundreds, thousands of people have told us that even though we didn't write that book, we didn't even read it when it first came out. We didn't read it for a few years after that. But our good friend, not always our friend, once our acquaintance, now our good friend wrote that book and it had an incredible impact. When someone's life has been impacted by your words, that has meaning. So when you have your favorite band, your favorite lecturer, your favorite author, and you have a chance to actually sit down with that person, they want to have that conversation more times than they don't. Yeah. So, so what we're doing here, like resolution number one for the this new year 2016 instead of going out and buying 20 books at ten dollars each or you know 30 books at 15 or 20 dollars each or whatever go to one seminar for 150 or 200 or a thousand dollars people say oh you know you guys are always doing events yes Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We're always doing events and we're also promoting other people's events yeah, because not just it, our events. it isn't about us making money. We, you know, we charge what we have to charge to put on the event and, you know, we're business people, so we need to make money, but we promote a lot of other events and we don't get paid for. We go to them and we, we get a chance to interact with people because we're there building relationships too. And any opportunity we have to get together with our listeners and find out what you guys are going through, what you're thinking, how you're responding to the things we're saying, what's working, where you're confused. That helps us when we do the Ask the Guy show and people send us their questions. We love that. We can't answer every question, but we love getting the questions. It helps us figure out, you know, where you're at. When you go to an event, when you get a chance to connect with people, it isn't just the people in the front of the room. When you go to an exhibit hall and there's a lot of people, man, you know me, Robert, I start on the left side. I work my way all through methodically one booth at a time until I've talked to every single exhibitor at a show. And the bigger the show, the more days I have to stay. And I get up early. I stay late. I'm in there constantly because it's a, such a target rich environment. It's such a great place to find all the people who are all there. Normally, these people are super busy, couldn't give you the time of day if you try to stop them on the street. But now the only only reason they're there is to talk with people. And the irony is so many people choose not to engage that actually you can get involved in a lot of really good quality conversations. It's, it's like speed dating. It's so efficient. Well, think about it. These are companies that generally pay thousands of dollars to have the right to occupy that hundred square feet for that two or three or four day event. So they're very, very interested in promoting what they do. And if you're a potential user of those services, rather than bristle against that and go, oh, I don't want to be sold anything. Thing. You go to these events and you can learn a ton in a short period of time. You know, all that capital for those books, borrow the books from somebody or go to the library or go online and then go to an event where you can meet somebody. Maybe you have a favorite author. If that author is appearing somewhere, go to book signings. Book signings are great. You get a chance to, to shake hands, to get your book signed, personalized, sometimes even a picture. Now, you don't always get you know half an hour to sit there with the author, but at least you make a connection and you can leverage that. Maybe that'll be under a building your brand show, but yeah. today we're talking about building your network. See, here's the deal. The more people that know you, like you, trust you, and know what you do, the better and more successful your business will be no matter what it is. If you're a real estate investor, you want to develop a reputation, a brand, and you need to get people who are on board with that. You need to build a network of folks who know you. When you're faced with a problem or a challenge or an opportunity, you know, the more people that you can call that you have a relationship with that like you, to your point, Robert, that, that respect you, that want to help you. That especially, take your call. Especially if you've helped them, right? The faster, you talked earlier about compressing time frames. the faster you're going to be able to get to the answer or find the resource, you know? A lot of times, and this is the challenge, Kiyosaki writes about this all the time, is understanding that A student mentality. It's great to be smart. It is great to know things. It is great. The problem is you get trained in a system that says you always have to have the answer. You 
have to figure it out by yourself. And if you ask for help, that's cheating. And that is the exact opposite of what really works in the real world. And so what you want to do is you want to build relationships and continually expand that network and learn something about everybody and learn something about everything you can. So you always have a way to bridge into a conversation, to make a good impression, to share something of value, and then to connect people. And we spend so much of our time doing this. And I got to tell you, the goodwill that you build doing that will open up the doors to so many resources that you need. It makes the ability to get from point A to point B so much faster. The path is so much shorter and you make less mistakes. It's a brand new year and your chance to build your network like never before. We've got some great ideas for you today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Live nationwide, you're listening to the Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Memphis, Tennessee is a market that delivers in more ways than one. As home to FedEx, Memphis is one of the largest distribution hubs in the world. That means working class jobs. No wonder Memphis is one of the best cash flow real estate markets in America. And the guy in Memphis who can deliver great affordable cash flow turnkey properties is Terry Kerr at Mid-South Home Buyers. Contact Terry through the resource section at realestateguysradio.com. And be sure to order Terry's tips for turnkey rental property investing. It's free. Just send your request to turnkey at realestateguysradio.com. That's turnkey at realestateguysradio.com. All aboard! Registration is now open for the Real Estate Guys 14th Annual Investor Summit at Sea. Imagine spending an entire week with like-minded investors, world-class educators, and real-world professionals. Returning this year are sales legend Tom Hopkins, international developer Beth Clifford, attorneys Mauricio Raul and Jeffrey Verdon, and the author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, G. Edward Griffin. New for this year, commercial mortgage broker and syndicator Michael Becker, personal development icon Kyle Wilson, and Ken McElroy's partner Ross McAllister. And joining us live and in person for his third Investor Summit, Robert Kiyosaki. It all begins February 26, 2016 in Miami, Florida. Visit realestateguysradio.com and click the tab that says Summit to learn more and reserve your spot. This transformational week is like no conference you've ever attended. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click Summit and make plans to spend a week with the Real Estate Guys and an all-star faculty on the 14th Annual Investor Summit at Sea. Hi, I'm Robert Kiyosaki, and I encourage you to listen to those wild and crazy real estate guys. They're the best. They're working for years, and they know what they're talking about. Welcome back to the Real Estate Guys radio program. There's just a day or two left for you to grab the last seat or two at Creating Your Future, the 2016 Goals Retreat right around the corner. This is an opportunity for you to really get in touch with what's important to you and create a plan to make this your best year ever. We're super excited about a new year, and obviously you can probably tell in our energy that we're excited about this topic, and that is the people you hang out with make up your future. Charlie Tremendous Jones said that you'll be the same person in five years as you are today, except for two things, the books you read and the people you meet. And we're gonna talk today about how you can get around some of the right people. Yeah. So again, I just go back to this notion that you have to understand really what you're in the business of building. And it isn't just a collection of books or a brain full of knowledge, but it's really a directory, a database full of people that you have built goodwill with. And so once you have that, then it becomes kind of easy. And then, and then how do you stay in these relationships? How do you cultivate the relationships? And that is you're always looking to add value. You don't do this to what you can get. You do it for what you can give. So think about being a farmer. Think about being a person who is uh, creating a, a field, if you will, and you want it to produce a lot of produce. You want it to be fruitful. And so you begin to go in and you begin to work it. Now, there's going to be people that you don't want in your network. They reflect badly on you. They we call them weeds. They put bad ideas in your head. You're going to have paradigms, some of which we tried to break at the top of the show pretty hard, right? That are rocks that prevent the roots from growing, that prevent you from really getting anchored in your new area. And so you're going to want to remove those. You're going to have baggage. You're going to have stuff. So you're going to have to deal with all of that. But if you, if you continually work it, the idea is that you want to nurture every single relationship that you've planted in this garden that you decided you want to keep. And you do that by adding value, not asking for favors, but doing favors, trying to find what other people are looking for and bring that to them. And it seems like such a subtle thing. And here's the other paradigm. 
We are so used to going through a scripted program. We get told from the time we're in kindergarten, this is what time you report, this is what time you take a break, this is what time you take a nap, this is what your homework assignment is, this is exactly the way you make the letter A, this is exactly what everything is, right? That's what we're taught. From kindergarten all the way through, most of us working in a corporate machine somewhere, we are just scripted. So we go to college and we're said, okay, you take this class, then you take that class, and you end up at the end with a degree. It's a very clear path. The real world is a lot squishier than that. It is a lot more nebulous. It's a lot more of feeling your way. And that's why if you can tether yourself to somebody who has a little bit more visibility, just imagine yourself, you walk into a room and you're in a fog. I mean, it's a complete fog and you can't see two feet in front of you, but you know there's gold in this room. So what you do is you find somebody in the room who can see a little bit further than you and you kind of put their your hand on their hip and you move along with them and then they connect to somebody else and somebody else can and somebody in that room knows where that pot of gold is and if you get the right connections you're going to end up at the pot of gold too. That's the way it's at and so because of that. Our scarcity mentality, our fear, the guy that goes into a seminar or goes into an exhibit hall and goes, well, I'm not going to talk to that person. I'm afraid of being sold. What is the guy going to lock you up? Right. I mean, what is the guy going to do? Pin you down and grab your wallet. I mean, have a degree of understanding. Nobody's going to make me do anything I don't want to do. I'm open-minded. I'm here to explore. I'm not afraid of saying no. I'm not afraid of saying yes. I want to get to the right answer. If you're leading me to the pot of gold, I'm on board, right? And if I find out you're not, then I can disconnect and look for somebody else who is. But it is not a firm process. You have to trust the process. You have to trust that if I will go out and I will begin to make these connections and I will begin to add value, I don't exactly know how I'm going to get a return on my time. I don't exactly know how I'm going to get a return on my investment. Not everything I do will pay off or pay off right away. But if I do enough, Sooner or later, good things are going to start to happen. And I can tell you, if you're on the outside looking in right now, and I've gone through this personally because I was kind of a homebody, I was kind of an information junkie, I was a study everything and analyze everything but not get out there and do stuff kind of guy, and I learned pretty soon that once I started getting out there, now I have absolute faith. When I go out, I know something good is going to happen. I don't know who, I don't know where, I don't know when. I just know if I'm out, I'm going to meet somebody and something good is going to happen. And guess what? Almost every single time, it does. That is how you take the nebulous and make it the rock solid, is you go out and do it. So there are some things you can do. It's not all vague. Let's talk about what football teams do. I mean, here we are right in the playoff season, and I know you love football, but the team doesn't just go out there and say, oh, let's wing it, let's give it a let's give it a try. They prepare. They have plans. They have ideas. Now, does it always go to plan? Of course not. The vague nebulous part is they don't know what the other team's going to do. They don't know which way the wind's blowing. They don't know what's going to happen. They know that they're prepared for lots of different eventualities. So how can you be prepared to go out and network? Well, the first thing is how do you show up, right? How do you show up when you walk into the room? Do you look successful? People say, well, you shouldn't judge people by the way they look. Yeah, well, here's a clue. People do. Yeah. That's the thing, right? We talk about the 444 rule, which is a wonderful thing I learned from a guy named Joel Bauer. He said, here's the deal. When you dress nicer than everybody else, it takes you four minutes longer to get dressed in the morning. You are four degrees hotter all day because of what you're wearing, and you get four times the respect. So whether or not you're a person who dresses up, it doesn't matter. You don't have to wear a suit and tie or a dress. You have to look good for the crowd. A lot of people go to these real estate seminars like in dirty t-shirts and they didn't even brush their hair and they're like, just I'm just sitting here to get the information. No, you're not. You're there to meet people that can influence your very future. You're there to make an impression. Yeah. And you're going to make one. <laughs> you're going to make one. You just to decide which one. You need to be strategic about the kind of impression you want to make. When we first met, you had a successful business in another industry. And yet you were looking to get into the real estate and the mortgage industry. So you didn't show up as an office products guy. That's not how you showed up. You would have been very effective as an office product guy. I mean, you could play that role. But that wasn't going to get my attention as a successful real estate guy, right? You came in with a completely different attitude, a makeup. And it wasn't that you lied. It wasn't that you said you were something that you weren't. It was all the way you positioned. You looked professional. You knew the language. You asked great questions, right? You don't have to know everything. You just have to know who you're trying to be. Well, I'd been studying. 
And, and it goes back to that. So, you know, when you and I get ready to go to a trade show, we go through the whole website, we look at every speaker, we Google every speaker, we think about which ones, if we only could meet the top five, who they would be. We come up with a plan to try to do that. Uh, it might be a pre-approach. It might be, you know, when we get there, we figure out where they're at, when they're speaking. You know, we will make sure we sit someplace where we can have our face seen. We make eye contact. We're actively listening. We're always suited it up because that's kind of our shtick. It's very strategic and very intentional about what we do. And if we can learn something a little bit about what they want or need, sometimes you don't know that. Sometimes it'll be uh, somewhere in something you may read on a website or something. Sometimes it may be a, if I hear them on another interview or a podcast and I can hear something they've said. Sometimes it'll be something they say during their talk in the front of the room. Sometimes I can go to their booth if they have their team there and I can find out a little bit. So tell me about your business. What's the biggest challenge you're facing? What's the biggest opportunity? What has you most excited? Very broad questions. And then people will talk and then you learn. And now when you engage with the main person, you're like, hey, you know, I've been following your company. True. Yeah. It's only been 10 minutes, right. but I've been following your company or I've been following your career. And I, I like what you had to say today. And, and I'm just curious what you think about this or think about that. Again, you don't have to be brilliant because you don't have to talk that much. What you have to do is just ask a few strategic questions and get the other person talking. Now, you do have to have a level of confidence to be able to engage at that level, right? That's but, back to the be prepared. You, <laughs> you absolutely do. If it's a conference about a particular niche, a particular demographic, you want to have a cursory knowledge of that. So you can definitely get Get in the right conversations. Yeah, well, so for example, uh, we were on a call uh, the other night with one of our syndication students, and we were talking to him a little bit, and he was thinking about an industrial play in a particular industry. And he had some ideas about what he thought that the industry would want or need. And I said, well, you know, what I would do is go try to figure out where uh, the facilities people in that industry congregate, what they're reading, and get on that mailing list, start reading the newsletters, frequenting the websites. If you can attend a seminar where the thought leaders of the industry are sharing what the trends are and where the potholes are, then you're going to quickly begin to understand if your thesis being an outsider is really plausible or not. It might make perfect sense to you in the incestuousness of your own mind, but if you don't go out and rub your brain against other brains, especially people that are qualified to have opinions, then you're not really going to know. And I would not put a bunch of real money on the line just betting that I've figured out what the industry's problem is as an outsider looking in. I want to go talk to the real people. I always say if you want to build a better mousetrap, interview some mice. Right, Right. Absolutely. It's about asking questions. So this idea of how you show up is not only physically how you show up, but also are you prepared? If you're a real estate investor or you just want to be a real estate investor and someone says, well, great, let's stay in contact. Do you have a business card? Do you have a business card that shows who you are? Or are you scribbling your work email on the back of somebody else's business card? You have a chance to show up however you want to show up. So this is the Boy Scout motto, be prepared. When you go to an event, when you go to a local real estate investment club or association, when you go to one of those events, great places to meet people, great places to meet investors, expect something to happen, like you talked about, Russ, and then be prepared. Be prepared to follow up. A lot of times people run out of business cards. It amazes me. I don't know how this this happens. You know you're going to an event where you need to have business cards and somehow you, you run out. Well, you could print more. You could bring extras. They're not that expensive. Be prepared. It's a really good idea to have your own website that is about your real estate business. Even if you're doing it part-time, when you don't have a website to send somebody to, when you give them a Yahoo or a Gmail email address, that's not the same as when it's your name at yourbusiness.com and it really is your business, even if your business is just getting started. So there's a lot you can do to show up in the right way. Yeah, but don't be the guy that goes out there and does the, you know, little color printer, tear your own business cards right. apart and you hand somebody this little flimsy piece of paper. With the same cut and paste graphics that every other person that does that has? Yeah, you know, have an image. And even if it's just generic, you know, if you can get your own name as a domain and you have a nice 
nice looking card that's just simply your email address and your name and and uh, your phone number and if it's your cell phone that's fine hopefully you've got a professional greeting on and it's not you know some fun thing that you you know you're for your friends and family or whatever just make sure you have some of those basic things you know and then and then when you're out there talking to people the other thing is think about how you want to be perceived and and, and this is a tough one but I'm going to say it anyway you know I really encourage the younger folks that I mentor to take an acting class. And the reason I do that is because if you can think about it, if you've ever seen, in fact, if you saw the movie Iron Man 3, it was great, right? Ben Kingsley played this guy who was supposed to be the Mandarin, this evil, super capable guy. And really what he was, was he was just a British actor that was like just goofing off drunk half the time. And then he would pass out, but he could act, right? He could really play the part. And the contrast showed really what a great actor he was because you were watching him play two sides of the same personality. Just watching Ben Kingsley act was yeah. amazing. But the reality is, is that, you know, you can do the same thing. And again, this is where it gets tough because this is not about faking. No, acting helps you convey emotion correctly. I've not done that before, but if you have a hard time communicating, acting classes are a great way for you to be able to communicate. You play the role. So you imagine yourself, if you think about it, okay, I'm going to be a real estate investor. And you think about the kind of real estate investors. Again, this goes back to being in an environment, right? You don't have anything to draw on if you haven't been around them. We've hung around with Ken McElroy. We've hung around with uh, Robert Kiyosaki. We've hung around with all kinds of people whose names you may not know, but they're successful real estate investors. They all have a different style. They dress a certain way. They talk a certain way. They're all very successful. So it's not like one way or another is the way. No. But they all have an aura of competence, of confidence. They have a way they come across and people take them seriously. And so you have to look at that and you look around and you draw upon these people that you know and you say, okay, well, you know, I think that guy's style is the style I would like to begin to emulate. You know, think about when you were an insecure teenager or preteen, right? And you'd look around and try to figure out who the cool people were and the way they wore their hair, or what kind of clothes they wore, the words and languaging and gestures they used. All of us carry around a little bit of that that are this amalgamation of things we collected along the way. Growing up in the real estate investment community and being into that, fitting into that subculture is exactly the same. And so your ability to set aside whatever paradigm you have of yourself today and become this new person. One of my favorite quotes, and I hope this is one that I'm famous for someday, is be who you're becoming. I was taught early in my sales career to fake it till you make it. I was the youngest person on a corporate sales for 22 years old, no college degree, wet behind the ear. I mean, and I went out into corporate America in Silicon Valley and I had to sell to corporate business people. And the way I did it was I had spent some time with a guy 12 years older than me and his partner who was 14 years older than me. And they used to take me out and I learned how to dress. I learned how to talk. And when I went out, I wasn't me. I was them. Right. I just pretended I was them. I acted like I was them. But when they said, fake it till you make it, I felt phony. Right. And phoniness brings about an insecurity that comes out that people can smell. But if you, if you really study acting, like method acting, you become that character. In fact, you can look at these characters like Heath Ledger or Bella Lugosi that, that are so good, they get lost in the character. Right. And they, they forget who they really are. Maybe it's okay in this case to get that good. But again, this isn't about trying to fake people out. This is about trying to affect change in your life where maybe maybe you're 25, 30, 40 years old even, or maybe even older than that. And you, you've been away. You've thought of yourself a certain way for a long time. But you've just like, hey, it's the beginning of 2016. I've had it. I want to change my life. I don't want to be who I've been. The same level of thinking is going to continually take me to the same level of result. I need an extreme makeover. I need a new attitude. I need a new look. I need a new style. I need a new network. I need a new friends. That's what we're talking about right here. And whatever level you're at, unless you're at the very, very, very top of the food chain, there's probably a level up you could go. We're constantly trying to figure out how do we get to the next level? How can we get to the next level? How can we find even more brilliant people, more accomplished people that we can hang out with? And then how do we need to conduct ourselves to fit in that room? Well, and it's instead of fake it till you make it, be who you're becoming. That's not disingenuous because the other side of the acting part is 
to really be who you are. Who you are is plenty. It just takes a little refinement and a little communication and a little influence, but you don't want to change everything about yourself, the great parts of your personality and the wonderful parts of your life that are going to help you in real estate. You want to hang on to that, but we all need to shed some of those habits that aren't serving us. Well, that's where you put your personal stamp on these things you pick up from other people that you find are effective. You know, Tom Hopkins in his sales training says how he looked at the words that other successful people were using and he created his own words that he was able to use to create those same results. And it's the same thing. That's really what I'm talking about. We're talking today about building your network in the new year. We've got more. When we come back, we'll play real estate trivia and you'll meet our guest today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. The Real Estate Guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects totaling more than one billion dollars don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you attend the secrets of successful syndication and learn how to build a team raise capital find deals and make full-time money in six months or less go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events all the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk optimize profits and earn big money you can too go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events Hi, this is Lawrence Yun, Chief Economist with National Association of Realtors, and you are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program, and Happy New Year. It's a new year upon us. So excited for all the wonderful things that are going to happen this year for you and yours. Before we get back to our discussion about building your network, it's time to play Real Estate Trivia, your chance to win a prize by knowing today's Real Estate Trivia question, which you'll hear in a few minutes. And then as soon as you think you know the answer or just want to guess, send us an email to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Include your name and your mailing address so that if you're the winner, we can send you a copy of Robert Kiyosaki's latest book, Second Chance. It's a big one and it can be yours if you know today's Real Estate Trivia question. Last week on The Real Estate Guys, our last show of the year was from Phoenix, Arizona at the Single Family Event. And we asked this, which U.S. state has the most single family houses? Well, the answer is California with more than 6 million of them. Number two is Texas with more than 5 million single family homes. Here's this week's trivia question, kind of a different side of this equation. What U.S. state has the highest percentage of its population living in apartments? So what U.S. state has the highest percentage of the people that live there renting apartments? If you know or you think you have a good guess, send it to us to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Include your name and your physical mailing address so that if you're the winner, we'll send you a copy of Second Chance, the great book by Robert Kiyosaki. That's today's real estate trivia question. We're talking today about building your network in the new year. What are things you can do to get around the right people? And one of the things we've always talked about on the show, and we'll give you a resource for this before we're done, is going to a real estate investment club. All over the world, not just in the U.S., but all over the world, investors get together at meetups, at casual events, sometimes at membership organizations where they talk real estate. In fact, we had our own club like that for nearly 10 years where we got real estate investors together on a monthly basis. Sometimes it's quarterly, sometimes it's weekly, but get, it's a great way to get around real estate investors. Yeah, and it goes back to this idea that you want to compress time frames, right? You want to learn from other people. You want to learn how to talk and that's also important we talked earlier about how you show up how you communicate the words you use your ability to put together ideas and sentences and phrases I mean it sounds so simple but this is learning a whole new language right and there's new techniques and there's new uh, perspectives and especially when you're learning a new product type I mean you can go to a real estate investment club most clubs are going to be about single family or residential investing some will get involved in uh, multifamily if you go to a higher level of multifamily you're going to go to other places where more professional 
regional, more higher level people are meeting. Uh, but it's a great place to start. And I'd encourage not just going to the clubs that are about real estate investing, but go to things that are peripheral to real estate investing. You know, when the uh, meltdown happened in 2008, one of the things that we took the opportunity to do, especially as we came off the treadmill of running the real estate investment club, uh, we started traveling around to more investment conferences where people were investing outside of real estate. They weren't interested in real estate. They didn't understand real estate. And it helped us broaden our perspectives. A lot of that's been reflected in the show over the years. And uh, now, you know, we've obviously gotten back into going to the, the residential family conferences. And now we're talking about going to other higher end conferences, trying to understand what's going on at a bigger level. And part of that is because there's bigger players right now in the residential space, people who weren't in the space five or 10 years ago. And so the idea of when you decide to pick out a group, a club or wherever, try to pick one that is going to be populated by the kind of people that are involved in the kind of product types that you're most interested in or things that are related to or peripheral to that that could be connected. Well, and you don't have to make a huge commitment on day one. A lot of times you can go around and visit a lot of different clubs. If you're in a highly populated area, there might be a dozen different real estate investment clubs. Go to them all. Go and show up and see who's there and what's it like and so forth. Now, some clubs are more about selling you stuff and some clubs are more about information and both have a place. In fact, today we have a very special guest. Scott Whaley is with us. Scott is the leader of the largest real estate investors association in the U.S. National RIA and the founder of the newly launched Real Estate Investor and Funding Association. He's got over 15 years experience in real estate and lending and has developed more than $30 million of real estate. Scott's been a board member for the National Real Estate Association for more than eight years and during that time he served two terms as vice president and he's currently the president of the National RIA. Scott Whaley, how are you, Scott? Great, Robert. How about you? Very good. So uh, today, you know, well, the world has changed and uh, real estate is still a wonderful investment. It's easier in a lot of ways to get information, but at the same time, it's harder to get good information. So tell us, if, if you will, let's start at the beginning. What's the role of a RIA? You're definitely going to be different depending upon who you talk to. Yeah. So some RIAs are run for profit. Some are run by uh, a board. Um, some think that they're in the education business. Some think they're in the support networking business. Right. I'm more of the, the second. I think supporting and networking is a underappreciated value because the thing is, just as you yourself, I can try to learn and figure out everything on my own. But if I talk to Robert, he can give me the insight of like 30 years. And at ARIA, if it's got really pe a lot of people who are going to give freely and they're not like to keep their hand out and asking for money, right. that value add makes everything else pale in comparison because you can't, I mean, what are you going to value your time at? Right. What are you going to, and people think they usually reduce it way too much to money, I believe. They don't value their own time. Like the time of going down to the wrong group or a place where people are only trying to get to, you know, they, like I'll give you some stuff, but if, only if I get some stuff. And if they're always doing that measuring, that's probably not where you want to go. Yeah, this is part of the mindset of it, right? A lot of the, and we've had the chance and opportunity to speak for a lot of different groups in a lot of different places all over the country and the world. And sometimes it's a hard charging investor who leads the group and their whole heart is just to bring everyone along. And other times it's all about how much can we get out of the room tonight in dollars. Uh, and so it's refreshing to see that at this level, uh, it's more about the supporting today. And then we've been talking off mic a little about this, but let's talk about the changing role. In the heyday of, of real estate before the crash, there was a, uh, RIA chapter and, and every you know zip code practically, and, and we'll use that generically. I sure. don't mean a branded RIA chapter, but you know a bunch of investors would get together and yeah. have some outcome. And then of course we went through all that turmoil, and we've shaken out who the kind of real players are. But today there's a great opportunity to get around these other investors, and the model has changed. Absolutely. If you find the people that are actually there, and you can talk to other people. And I would suggest don't talk to the person at the front of the stage as much as you talk to the other people in the crowd. Yeah. And you notice, have they been there for a long time? Do you see people who are successful and can say, look, I started with nothing, now I have five or I have ten units and then they're willing to just share what they have. Well, and if you haven't been to one of these events, there's lots of different economic models. Some people charge for admittance at the door. Sometimes it's a membership that's a year long. Sometimes they're free and then you're probably going to end up buying something, right? right? So there's lots of different models of it. Before we talk about what you do at the national level, on the chapter basis, how is it that a new investor, someone interested in real estate investing, can get involved with a chapter? Just show up. And you know, if you say, uh, I, I would suggest if it resonates with you. And like you get in there, and these are people you want to be with. Because here, here's the other piece. If they're not your friends, if they're not people you feel comfortable with, 
I would go, run, run, run away. Right. Because if you don't have a good feeling about them, not that they're giving you everything, not they're being Mother Teresa, but you don't like this person, A, they know what they're doing. B, I get the sense that they're not just a predator and they're not, you know, because it's okay to ask for money, I, I believe. Sure. It's not a one or other, but if you feel good about being around those people, you're going to come back. And the probably, I would trust that feeling. Then you will want to have an association. And then here's the, here's the secret to all training, I believe. It's that you're going to become like the people you like. Yeah. And the people you hang around. I mean, that's nothing new. That's like, you know, how, how long does that go? But you hang out with those people. And this is the way I got in the business. I got lucky enough to be around people that were phenomenally successful. And somehow I just became more like them without yeah. even thinking. That's and, how it works. Yeah. So it's a great avenue for you to meet that investor in the chair next to you. Say, hey, what's working for you? What are you doing? What kinds of properties and so forth? But also it's a chance to meet vendors. We need in this business, we need people to help us execute our strategy. How does the vendor role vary between different RIAs? Some RIAs have not thought it through that the vendors are probably their biggest asset. Yeah. Maybe along with that, some of the ex really highly experienced investors. A vendor, in many cases, is an investor. Sure. And they've been in the business a long time. They've seen so many deals. They are an asset that can look at your deal. They can say, you know, whether it's a roofer or a contractor or a title company or an attorney or a lender, they're going to look at your deal and they will, what do you think? And the thing is, if you ask, what do you think? Because they're seeing deals day in and day out. And they know that market because they live and breathe it. They have a different and probably bigger perspective. Absolutely. And they know who's credible. You ask them, well, who would you trust? Who would you go to? Who do you hang out with? Right. And pretty soon you find out the good characters all hang out with the good characters. Well, you know, let's take a practical example. So at the RIA meeting tonight, there is a roofer who's going to talk about the seven things you need to know about, you know, inspecting a roof. And if he does a good job and he educates you and he gives you some things to think about, then why wouldn't you say, hey, I'm going to get this guy's card and maybe I'll do business? As opposed to the old model, which was, I'm going to tell you the three of the seven things, but to get the really four good ones, you're going to have to come to my boot camp or pay $9.97 or sign up for my news or whatever it is, right? right. So it's, it's now the kind of the law of attraction. We're going to attract the people that are helping us grow as real estate investors. Are right. you seeing that shift? Absolutely. I mean, because I think it's just working better. The other part, the, we've been so conditioned now. I think people see a, a, a pitch coming a mile away. Yeah. You know, like, oh, this is a free one. Because if it's a free event, here's the one thing. I think free is a, is a great thing. But if you go to a meeting that's always free, you've got to ask yourself, they have to be making money some way. Right. Now, it may be free and they're not promising a lot and they don't deliver a lot. But somewhere, somebody has to make money. But the one thing I love about this new social business model is that instead of like, okay, I'll give you my, my great information or my great knowledge, but first you give me money. Yeah. Now it's just changed. You do the other way around. So they give you great information, great advice, great feedback, knowing that you may not respond and like. But you know what? They do it with 20 people. Because you may go, you may not even stay in the business. You, right. you may come by and, and move out of town. But enough people will. But enough people, and it's, and it's just a smart, easier way. And I will tell you from people who've actually switched to that model, I've had them say, I used to be able to pitch and sell, and I could. I mean, that was really good. You know, they would actually say this, but I didn't like it. But right. I was good at it, so I did it. And now they say they do this new model, and they actually enjoy it. And I've asked them, they're going like, yeah, I love, this is actually kind of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's talk about this. There are a variety of groups that meet. Uh, some are around a specific market. Some are around a specific product type. Some are you have affiliations. At the national level, talk about how you support groups and really what the, the national RIA is all about. It's about scalability. And I know that sounds kind of technical, but here is the challenge. When you see a small group, a great meetup, but it's limited in its ability, no matter how great it is, if there's 10 people there and they meet and they're wonderful people, but how much can they help you? How much influence from vendors or other attention because they can't deliver a lot? And Not a lot of leverage. Yeah, and that's, right. the, that's the unfortunate thing, and so that's a, a constraint. Yeah. So what National does is by having 100 chapters and about 40,000 investors all around the country, you couldn't have a Home Depot come and negotiate individually with each chapter. They wouldn't want to. It just doesn't work. The numbers right. don't work, right? No. So it's just like an Airbnb or Uber. It doesn't work if it was just one city and that's all they did. So what they do is they negotiate on the behalf of, of the locals. They also give them a lot of things that are not really tangible, but we actually spend a lot of money on legislative. Everything from labeling a person as a broker-dealer licensed. If you do two owner-occupied sales and you carry the note, yep. 
you do three of those, you're a broker dealer. Right. So we're spending money to fight for that. So that's legislative. We also negotiate with those people and then we, um, with the vendors. And if it's a really good vendor and it's something that would add that, help that mem that local chapter get more members, deliver more value to its local people, then we will work with them and negotiate the deal for on behalf of everybody in national. Because at the end of the day, we've got to deliver those goods. And the only way we're going to be able to do it, and this is how high the bar has been set, I think, since 2006, you have to become the trusted authority. You may not always be, and you may have some track record, and people may remember you back when, whenever. But if you don't become the trusted authority, then you're the other. Right. And I think the other is a losing proposition long term. Their day's not over, but people talk. And now people talk really effectively over long distances, really fast. Yes, they do. You could hide before, and it's harder to hide today. <laughs> you can run, but you can't hide now. <laughs> all right, good stuff. Well, now, Scott, let's talk about this new initiative. Let's talk about REFA. What is that all about? REFA is, its genesis was in 2006, as you're very aware, cause since you do training and syndications, things right. like that. Before 2006, there was maybe one private lender in the back, kind of like Vito or Tony, you know, and you go to, yeah. it's like, yo, I go in the back. And it's, yeah. Because you didn't need a private lender, really, because if you fogged, they said if you fogged a mirror, you got a loan. Right. Bruce Norris actually tells a story where the guy got the loan, he was dead. Wow. And um, <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. So our experience was 90% of all investor loans were done by Bank of America countrywide. And if you're old enough, and you know, we are, there was no reason for any private sources of capital. No. Then along comes 2006, mortgage meltdown. We all know about that. And what happened was very surprising was... A, you had Dodd-Frank come along and a lot of other regulations that made it, banks are being penalized so heavily and so regulated so hard, they don't want to do investor deals. They right. just don't want to do, especially small mom and pop indi individual investors, because they've got a compliance officer for almost every loan officer. It, it just doesn't work, so yeah. they don't want to do the business. So they leave. They go out of town. They're now doing maybe 9, 10% of the market. So that 90% has been picked up, whether it's uh, somebody with a lot of cash, a private lender, a crowd funder self-directed IRA, hedge fund, foreign money. All these new pools of capital started out kind of small, and now most of them have trillions of dollars at their fingertips. And so now we've got this whole new arena, some people call it alt-fin, some people call it peer-to-peer -peer lending. Bottom line, it's alternative financing. Yep. But there is no place, there's no storefront, and there's no one website. And so when you ask people, okay, there's all this money floating around, I hear about it. Right, how do I get it? How do I get it? And you ask most people, well, I bumped into them. Or I asked Joe, Joe yeah. turned me on, which is, I think that's totally insane. We have a thing called the internet, and we have things called computers and smartphones. And they will, if they can find you the perfect date, they should be able to find you the perfect funding. Right. So here is the concept of the Match.com for financing. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Tell us how that how that works. It's it's just copycat. Yep. It's the idea. I went and saw Airbnb, and I tried it. I tried Lyft. I loved it. I love the idea that. There was a consequence on either side of the equation if you don't treat the person well. Yeah. And that you will pay, that, so it's in your best interest to make sure the other person does well. I, and I love that model where yeah. um, in the old model there wasn't that, that consequence. And so in lending, why not do that? And in lending, how do we actually structure it where there's no barrier between the person with the capital and the person with the need, the investor who needs capital to fund my rehab, my wholesale, my whatever, yeah. and the person with capital? And that could be everything from self-directed IRA owner to a big hedge fund. I, I was actually in a conference, and it was um, a person from Asset Avenue. And I said, do you believe there's money for any deal? And he says, absolutely. He says, there is money available for any legitimate, just a legitimate return deal. Yep. The money is there. And I thought, well, what's the problem? The problem is there's no way for us to connect because nobody's being paid to connect us. Right. So if there's no loan officer and there's no storefront, somebody's got to create that platform. And we thought, well... How about if that was us? So what if there's an association where we don't charge to connect you guys? I used to be a loan officer. I used to, you know, I would get a couple points, point and a half to two points to connect you to a funding source. Sure. And even to this day, that's the way that model works. Yep. But that model and the thing that, and I don't mean disrespect, but I was, so I was one. Yeah. Is the truth is that model is based upon two things. One is I can make sure you stay ignorant. You have to remain ignorant. If I, I have to be the keeper of where all the great funding is, and you have to rely on me for it. You know? Exactly. So I have to keep you ignorant, and I can't educate you, and I can't tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth, because here's the thing. If I told you, like, look, I've got five guys in my pocket who will pay me a point on the back end, right? which is the model. Yep. If I said that to you, but you know what? There's like 10 other people out there down the street 
Now, they're not going to pay me a point, but they will give you cheaper money faster. Yeah. Obviously, I go out of business. I can't tell you that. Right. And so that model, I think, is happily so. I think that model is leaving. Yeah. And I think in the new model is where we all get together and we review each other's performance and we don't charge for a transaction just like Airbnb you may charge a fraction on the processing but basically you just get matched up because there's a lot of other ways to make money you don't have to make money on the transaction itself to make money in the business and that's our whole idea but it gets back to the, one of our other conversations which is scalability you can't do it if you try to do this in like a, just a small group right when we can get together as a group or as a tribe or as a community we can provide benefits that are beyond belief to our community. You know, what's the old saying? Yeah, either hang together or hang alone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, if you're interested in finding out if there is a, a local uh, RIA in your area. Or RIFA. Get, or, or RIFA. What's the best way for them to uh, find that information out? NationalRIA.com. And you just go under the, uh, the little map there and reefa.org, R-E-I-F as in Frank, A, reefa.org. And you will be able to find your local chapter on either one. The reefas oftentimes are actually an addition to a local uh, RIA chapter. Right. Good stuff. All right, Scott, this Robert. has been great. And uh, thanks for all the uh, great information and keep up the good work. Looking forward to it. Thank you. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. More when we come back, I'm your host, Robert Helms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. When the housing market crashed in 2008, San Antonio led the way in appreciation and cash flow. Would you like to have a strong, reliable investment that performs in both up and down markets? Cash flow is the key to successful investing and we have tons of positive cash flow properties for our ATW investors. Come see why the Milken Institute rated San Antonio the number one economy in the United States and why San Antonio is the only major city in the country to have a AAA bond rating. ATW Investments can teach you strategies for building strong, secure wealth with investments starting at $5,000. ATW's patented, proven, and powerful system will do all the hard work for you. ATW is where the perfect market meets the perfect strategy and produces the perfect results in your portfolio. To get started, go to the resource section of the Real Estate Guys website or email us at contact at atw-investments.com. Hi, I'm Steve Forbes. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Listen up. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program, the number one downloaded podcast on real estate investing. Happy New Year to you. Great to hang out with Scott Whaley. Yeah, it is. It's, it's always interesting, you know, as I've been saying, when you get a chance to get around people that have a broader perspective, that have a lot of connections, you know, you meet one guy like that and just imagine how many doors potentially open up. So as I'm reflecting on that, I'm just encouraging everybody who's out there listening, you know, who maybe is a small fry just out there just getting started. And you think about what, what can I do to really expand my influence? And that is you begin to build your own little herd, you know, maybe start your own club, uh, become the leader of the club and who knows how big it could get well even before you go there before you go start a club because i know your mind is like that and the most people listening are probably not of the mind it's a heavy lift to start a club there's a way you can be a support mechanism in an existing club good point you go and you show up and you help and you offer to do a class and you lead a little roundtable discussion and before long you may be a position to to start a club and i wouldn't discourage you in fact before we're done we've got a great report that talks about exactly what to do if if you're thinking about starting your own club, sometimes it's by necessity. You might be in an area where there is no club. I'm going to start one. We have a listener who is in an area like that who came to us a couple years ago and says, well, I can't find a club. I think I'm going to start one. And today he has a thriving little club where people get together and talk real estate. So that's a possibility. But the, the big point is don't just show up, sit in the back, take notes and leave. You might as well have not been there at all, right? You're going to get some information. But again, as we've talked about, it's not about that. Start to form relationships. And as Scott talked about, different clubs have different personalities. Are these people you could hang out with and be friends with? That's a big part of relationship building. You know, last week we uh, did the show from the Single Family Conference, and we met a lot of great people at that event. What was great for us is it wasn't the same old crowd we've been hanging around with necessarily. We certainly saw some friends, some fellow podcasters, some listeners, some co-investors, but we were in Phoenix. So what do we do? Called up Kenny McElroy and you and I and Ken hang out for several hours. And to me, 
that was a great, great part of that trip. All the stuff we learned was great, all the new people we met, all the networking, but hanging out just you, me, and Kenny for three hours, that was pretty powerful too. Yeah, and it was great because he came to us and he's got something he's working on and he had a question, he had a problem, and we kind of brainstormed on it. I don't know that we came up with an answer, but at least we were trying. And now that we're aware of that in our travels, we have the opportunity to potentially bring him an answer. And so it goes back to the thing we're saying. You know, the idea is he knows that we have a pretty big network, we're pretty well connected he comes out and spends time with us and not just because he likes us and not just because you know we can have some beers together and stuff I mean we're all social and we have a good time and we become friends but he also knows that we're connected and we're going to ask him hey what are you working on and where are you stuck and what can we do to help and And he does the same thing with us and he does the same thing with us this is the whole idea of networking it isn't how can I get something from that person it's starting with adding value what can I do to help that person if you do that enough if you just connect people great things are going to happen you just have to have faith in the system. Well, we talked at the top of the show about compressing time frames. And first of all, you have to you know, break paradigms that are in your own mind that prevent you. You know, oh, I'm shy or oh, I'm this or oh, I'm that. And that's why we talked about be who you're becoming. Uh, we also talked about getting out there. It's not about the information. It's about getting connected to people and you lead with value, Robert, as you were just mentioning. And where do you do that? You study, you listen, you learn, and you use that knowledge not to go build something in your portfolio as much as you use it to build a portfolio of people that you become connected with and then you look for ways to add value. The other part of that is to be intentional. There's going to be people that you meet that have small networks and you're going to meet people that have no networks and you're going to meet people that have pretty big networks. You're going to quickly find out that the most competitive people in terms of getting into a relationship are the people that have the biggest networks, right? Everybody is trying to get with them and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Most of the time, the people who are trying to do that are leading with their need. They're leading with what they want. They're coming to get. If you will enter into that relationship and not take that approach, if you will enter into that high-level strategic relationship with somebody that has a big network, a big connection of people that you would like to meet, then lead with how you can help. And you talked about on the club thing, which I think was a great point, you know, kick in and volunteer, right? You may say, well, gee, I'm, I'm kind of shy. I don't know how to walk into a room full of strangers and just start walking around introducing myself. But you know what? If you handled event registration and you signed everybody in, you're going to meet every single person and you don't have to initiate a single conversation. They're all going to come to you. And most of these clubs, they need that help. That's right. So be strategic about how you can have maximum exposure that fits into whatever level of personality you have at this particular point in time. We've had people approach us with that, right? We've had people in our listening audience that have said, hey, I'd love to come to this event. I really can't afford to right now. I'm a student, but I'd be happy to volunteer. And we've struck deals with people that have come and some have gone on to become big parts of our network and some came for an event and that was it, right? But figure out how you can add value. Is there something there for you? Because there will be if you'll invest the time. And to Scott's point, make sure you start to find where your crowd is. Where is your group? And to Russ's point, if your group isn't around, figure it out. You could start a club. In fact, we've got a great report that will uh, do exactly that for you. It's called 12 Questions to Ask When Starting Your Own Real Estate Investment Club. Yep. And so it's designed really with what we learned in 10 years of running clubs and meeting people who ran clubs. Like if we had to start all over again, you know, what are the things we wished we would have known or wish we could have thought about? And so that's available if you just send an email to club at realestateguysradio.com. That's club at realestateguysradio.com. You can get that free report. And here's the thing. We're at the time of year where we're looking forward. We're making our big plans, right? This is a time to be strategic. There's only so many hours in a day, so many days in a week, so many weeks in a month or a year, and you've got to get a decent yield out of your time, right? It's the one non-renewable resource. This year is going to come or go no matter how much value you do or don't put into it. And so to be strategic and to really think about how can I compress time frames and get from here to there faster, the theme of this show is have a plan and that plan should include connecting with the right people and have a plan for making those connections by adding value and then a follow-up plan to make sure you nurture those relationships. And if you go in with the attitude that I'm here to add value and good things are going to happen, I'm here to tell you, 
good things are going to happen. And you're going to end up being amazed at how quickly you can grow your network and your connections and, and have opportunities and deals and resources coming your way and how big your friends will get. And then once you do, if you decide to actually start a club or put yourself in a position where you're influential within an existing club or program or network, you're going to find that more and more people come to you and it really starts to build on its own momentum. And pretty soon, you know, you've got all kinds of people bringing you opportunities and that's when it really starts to get fun. Absolutely. Before you know it, you'll be a recognized expert in your space and uh, you'll gain a lot of friends and a lot of knowledge and hopefully a lot of property along the way. Hey, big thanks to Scott for sharing his time today. Super excited about this year. We've got a lot of great guests and a lot of great shows coming up for you. Until next week, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid South Home Buyers, low cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.